What does one day on the biggest MMO server in Minecraft look like? It probably looks like this. Multiply by 10 and you have a player who has probably made it to the end dimension of Skyblock. Multiply that by 10 and you have a decent player who can one tap mostly everything in the game. If you multiply that by 10, you have someone who doesn't have much to do left in Skyblock, after beating every boss that the game has to offer. By that point, most people move on to the next MMO to grind. Keyword, most. I've done quite a few documentaries on Hypixel Skyblock, but I feel like it's about time to show you what I've done in the game itself. With over 3000 hours. A time equivalent to about 10,000 Minecraft days. But why? What have I done with all this time? And what exactly brought me into Skyblock in the first place? I'll be answering all of those questions, and more. Today, I will be showing you, the complete Hypixel Skyblock experience. It all began during summer of 2019, in a faction server named Cosmic PvP. This does not sound like Skyblock, but we will get to that later. In this server, I bonded with two players who call themselves, Derpman MLG, and also Murdy Blurp. After getting raided three times, we got pretty bored of the server. Luckily, at around the same time, a new minigame called Hypixel Skyblock was released on Hypixel. So the squad told me to try it out. And I decided, why not? So the first day I ever spent in this game began. Like every other person who began on this game, I had no idea what was going on. There was one thing I did know, however. An area known as the Deep Caverns was important for becoming pro at the game. Which was the common goal of everyone. Speaking of common goal, I began on a solo profile, but then I joined a co-op profile with Derpman MLG, Murdy Blurp, and a few of their friends, so that we could help each other progress. But anyways back to what we were talking about which was the Deep Caverns. The Deep Caverns was accessible through gaining mining level 5, so I spent a few minutes doing that. First at the coal mines, then the gold mines, and finally, the Deep Caverns. A location filled to the brim with various overpowered entities that are looking to slaughter you. Each level below the next required better gear, which I did not have. After getting promptly one-shotted on level 2, I decided to get good stuff. I bought a diamond sword and attempted to enchant it one by one, but after 7 enchantment books, the XP costs of combining the next book were way too high. So I just left it that way. As for the armor, I obtained lapis armor from grinding the mobs on floor 2, which helped me survive the next floor. Floor 3 mobs don't attack you unless you attack them, and floor 4 was very frustrating to get through due to these mobs blocking the way. Floor 5 contained the juicy stuff, which you can tell by all the shiny light blue crystalline carbon. And also the mobs gave useful stuff I guess. But there was a useful R set. By mining enough diamonds, you could obtain hardened diamond armor, which was one of the best sets at the time, which Derpman MLG had his eyes on. And since I was his friend, I would spend most of my time grinding lapis and diamond for the boys. The aforementioned lapis would go towards enchanting the armor made from the diamonds. And a few hours of grinding later, the whole squad was in enchanted art and diamond armor. And also Derpman MLG spent most of the co-op money on a grappling hook, which does this. I then spent a few more hours to gather all 175 fairy souls in the game, which you can trade for stat boosts at Tia of the Fairy. It was one of the most annoying things I ever did, and never again will I collect all fairy souls in the game. That was until Murdy Blurp introduced some of his friends. Two people by the name of Murdy Ref, and LV60. Murdy Blurp wanted to create a new profile, since most of the members on the current profile were inactive by his standards, and we had reached the maximum amount of members. And the new profile would have him, me, and his friends. And they would try hard the game for real this time. So I said, why not? So I joined the new co-op, transferring most of my stuff from the old profile. The new plan involved a weapon known as the Ember Rod which used to be one of the most valuable weapons in the game. 
It was obtained by killing a big magma cube that spawns every two hours in the charred wasteland known as the Nether Island. But instead of killing it, you could sometimes get the Ember Rod by interpearling in as the boss died, and swooping the item with no effort. And if you got the Ember Rod, you could sell it for hundreds of thousands of coins. So the tryhards would just camp at the Nether Island for hours on end. I attempted this, only to get vaporized by the magma boss, who came out of nowhere and promptly started pissing out a giant line of fireballs. So there goes the ember rod. Luckily, everyone else in the co-op got ember rods somehow. Murdy Blurp accidentally put his in the furnace, so he had to get a new one. Beyond that, there wasn't really much to do. Except to go for the pigment sword which was the best sword in the game despite you needing to harvest 1.2 million pork chops. Of course, there's no way on earth you'll get it by killing pigs manually, so you'll need about 20 tier 7 pig minions located in the middle of the sky so that all the pigs they spawn fall 150 blocks into a bunch of hoppers and die brutally. Also called a dropper. Which is exactly what we built. Of course, me and the boys would have to AFK nearly 24-7 for the dropper to work, and even then, it would take about 3 weeks to get enough pork to craft a single sword. Due to a limit on the minions you could place, there was no faster way to do it. We weren't going to AFK for 3 weeks straight so in the meanwhile, we began fishing. The best place to fish at the time was at the hub pond. With fishing, comes fishing levels. With each fishing level, you unlock cool new mobs to fish up and kill. The final one was the Sea Emperor, which drops the Sea Emperor skull. 24 of said skulls will give you Sea Diver armor, which was one of the most expensive sets at the time. But it would be cool. Also, the byproducts of fishing, most especially the lily pads, could be crafted into the Rod of Champions, which could be upgraded to the Rod of Legends which sounds like it could be the most expensive fishing rod in the game, which it was. Despite this, LV60 decided to go for both Diver Armor and Legend Rod, which he got eventually. And when we weren't fishing, we were farming, which was done on two layers of pumpkin farms built by me and LV60, which was below the island, which used to look like this. Due to some poor engineering and design, hostile mobs would sometimes randomly fall from dark platforms above the farms and stomp the seeds. Which was very annoying. So I didn't farm that much. I was pretty bored and it was still summer break, so I would spend hours fishing with my rod of champions in the pond with the boys, while watching Minecraft Monday. It was quite the mood. And sure enough, the pig man sword was eventually obtained which LV60 happily wielded. And then the end update dropped. Like everyone else during the update, everyone had no idea what they were doing. At the time, I was in hardened diamond armor and used an aspect of the end, which I got from AFKing next to a giant enderman farm which was designed by one of LV60's acquaintances, which was also a huge pain for me to build, but it was worth it. How it works is that by building a bunch of platforms with no light, and setting the biome to the end biome, endermen will spawn naturally on each platform. Below the platforms, there is a giant swimming pool. From time to time, water flows down onto each platform and pushes the endermen into the giant swimming pool, and you probably know what happens next. Free ender pearls. And this water came from a hole on top of all the platforms, which is separated from the water source by a cobblestone minion mining a cobble generator. Whenever the minion mines cobblestone, the water would go down the hole. With this you can make about 4 aspects of the end every day, or about 1 million coins every day. One of which was owned by me. However, this was not good enough for the end update mobs as I was promptly shredded and atomized by the endermen especially the endermen at the lower levels, aka the zealots, who were way too hard to kill. This was a problem as killing the zealots drops a useful item called the summoning eye, which we will get to later. So after painstakingly trying to kill some endermen, I got the ender armor drop, which was decent enough for now. After reforging the ender armor to fierce, and getting double armor stats in the end due to the set bonus, I could kill a zealot in about 3 hits but it would be much more convenient to kill them in a single hit. 
so I spent the next few days af king a more powerful sword, called the leaping sword, which was less overpowered but also less time consuming than the pigman sword. After obtaining a few hundred thousand spider eyes from a cave spider minion dropper that drops cave spiders which drop size, and then compressing them into a bunch of other nonsense, and arranging the compressed nonsense in a vertical line, it was time to enchant my leaping sword. Instead of adding enchantments one by one, the better way was making three enchantment books with five enchants each, and adding them to the leaping sword to not accumulate too many anvil uses. There were about 15 useful sword enchants at the time, so of course, I added them all. With this, I could finally one-shot zealots and begin farming summoning eyes, which my co-op already started doing. Even then, you could average only one or two summoning eyes per hour, since the drop rate of a summoning eye is 1 in 400. And once you reach 8 summoning eyes, you can summon a dragon, which comes in 7 variants. The best ones being, unstable, strong, or superior. The goal was to get armor pieces from any of these types, although superior would be the most convenient. If you didn't get a good dragon type, the last hope is that you would obtain an aspect of the dragon, which was worth about 7 million coins. Too bad it was the rarest drop from the dragon. The most effective way to get loot is to have three different people place two to three summoning eyes, instead of one person placing eight eyes and you would have a higher chance of good loot if you got first to third place in terms of damage. So doing dragons had to be a team effort, best played with two other people. Luckily, the co-op had at least two other people. The squad would do a few dragon fights, although most of the time we would get trash dragon types. For the fights, I would use Runin's bow, which was quite expensive, so I sped things up by running several spider minions on separate profiles and transferring their materials to my main profile. Which is now a bannable offense. So don't do it guys. But at least it was one of the best bows in the game. LV60 also owned the same bow, and one day, he would randomly get an aspect of the dragons at one of the fights I was in, and he would pass down his pig man sword to me. Which I passed down to Murdy Blurp since my sword was better than his sword at the time. And then he became inactive after getting it. Which was around the time that school began. Murdy Blurp, Murdy Ref, and LV60 all became inactive, which created a feeling known as loneliness. Or maybe they found other games to play. But anyways, I still wanted to play Skyblock. Because I had my eyes on the strong dragon armor, since Superior was too expensive. I also craved the aspect of the dragons, which was a good alternative to the way too expensive pigman sword. Speaking of pigman, 0% of my audience are pigman. Which is good. But can we have 120% of my audience subscribed? Also can we hit x plus 10 subscribers where x is my sub count? Please it will be so cool. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. Which was obtaining dragon gear which requires dragons, which requires summoning eyes. So I continued grinding summoning eyes and saving them up. Once I got 8 summoning eyes, I would tell the co-op to get online for a bit to do one dragon fight. To help deal more damage, I bought stuff using the money from selling aspects of the end. Which included getting Dragon Hunter 3 on my bow, strong dragon armor, and some strength potions. And it would pay off. On September 19th, after placing 3 summoning eyes and getting enough damage to be in 2nd place, I lucked out and got an aspect of the dragons, which I then enchanted and reforged immediately. Which meant goodbye to the old leaping sword. On the very next dragon fight, after getting 2nd place again, I got another aspect of the dragon. Nobody in the co-op really needed it, so I decided to sell it. Instead of selling it clean, I decided to enchant it so it would sell for a higher price which somehow worked. By then, I decided that I wanted some superior dragon armor for myself. But I did not have enough money. After making some more money from grinding summoning eyes, selling loot from fishing, selling more aspects of the end, and using magma cube minions, I painstakingly bought superior frags one by one to make my armor, which required 240 fragments. About 30 million coins later, I finally obtained the armor and after enchanting it with growth and protection, I was good to go. 
The only problem was that, I now had nothing left to do. But then the admins dropped the Slayer update. Where you pay this guy to start a Slayer quest, in which you go to a certain area to kill certain helpless mobs, until a big mob is spawned, that comes to protect the helpless mobs, only to get slain just like the other helpless mobs. These quests come in three types, which are Zombie, Spider, and Dog. And they come in four different difficulties. As usual, everyone was clueless again. But the first question that came to my mind was, how could I milk this update for money? I had about 50 million coins at that time, but I wanted to hoard more. And the new money making strategy was doing the brand new Slayer quests, obtaining a crap ton of the boss drops, crafting them into good stuff, and combining the good stuff into good items, and then reselling them for overpriced prices to make up for the costs of the Slayer quests and other materials. And gain profits. It would also be convenient to gain other rare drops from Slayer, mainly critical level 6, which sold for a few million coins. Which was dropped from the wolf boss. Speaking of which, my personal favorite money milking strategy was doing Sven Slayers and crafting all of its main drops, aka wolf teeth, into mana flux orbs. To resell at overpriced prices. The byproducts of Critical 6 and other wolf stuff could then also be sold for overpriced prices. With this Sven Slayer's strategy, I would slowly make my way to 100 million coins, which I did not plan on using. However, monofluxes require a ridiculous amount of gold to craft, so I replaced the magma minions with gold mining minions. It was also very boring to do the bosses itself because I used a tedious cheese strategy where you kill all the dogs required, except two, then use Lee to bring two dogs from the ruins to the hub pond. Then you kill them here, spawning the boss in the water, causing it to be really slow. You could then strafe around it and kill it. The tier 4 revenant was quite easy to kill with superior dragon armor and the aspect of the dragons, but I tended to avoid revenant slayers as they were quite unprofitable. I also avoided tarantula slayer as it was ridiculously difficult at the time, although I found another cheese strategy where you can spawn the boss in a hole and camp on it. Which got boring really quickly. So after milking Sven slayer for several million coins, I decided to try out other aspects of the game such as foraging, farming, more fishing, which also got old really quick, so I decided to join a Skyblock guild to see if it would make my experience more tolerable. The guild in question was Skyborn, which LV60 joined a few months before. So I just followed his footsteps. And even though LV60 basically quit by this point, I met some other interesting people in this guild including a person who tried to join my co-op after hearing I had money. A person who somehow got an overflux capacitator, which had a 0.1% chance of happening. And also not Nut Melon. A person who happened to have developed a program that helps you optimize damage in Skyblock, and created a Discord server for the purpose of using the program. Which grew to become the biggest Skyblock server, only to get but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. This aforementioned person called Not Not Melon, challenged me to race him to 30 skill average. So I said, sure. At that point, the game had 7 skills, so leveling 1 skill means 0.14 average. I had a skill average of only 25, and for good reason. Most of the skills were pointless, and honestly quite excruciatingly long to grind. The 7 skills include fishing and mining which are the slowest to level and also the least rewarding. Farming, foraging, and combat, which would take over a hundred hours, each, to max. Although the last two are quite useful. Finally, you had alchemy and enchanting, which would both cost tens of millions of coins to max out, but would take only a few hours to max. The fastest out of the two was alchemy. However, I didn't really feel like spending any money to buy the materials to brew potions for Alchemy 50. So I decided to farm the materials myself. The most popular method was to buy about 1000 enchanted sugar cane and brew it, which should take only an hour. But to save money, I spent tens of hours manually farming enchanted sugar, and way more hours brewing it into potions. Not to mention the 5 hours it took to build the sugar cane farms. 
I use this strategy because brewing enchanted sugar was much more efficient than combining it into enchanted sugar cane and brewing it, although brewing it would take much longer. To help speed up the process, I used an auto brewer that was designed by Nadaniko, an old Skyborne member. To further speed things up, I bought Young Dragon Armor for the speed, which was the fastest set in the game. Despite this, it would still take an excruciatingly long amount of time to hit Alchemy 50. And also I was busy doing something else other than Alchemy. The aforementioned something else being auction flipping. A strategy that I picked up from a forum post made by the former greatest auction flipper on Skyblock, known as Mutefi. Who quit and exposed all of his strategies. Which I then used. So after spending a few hours every day to farm sugar cane and brew stuff, I would go to the auction house and use my pre-existing money to bid relatively low prices on several clean aspect of the dragons, during relatively inactive hours. Half of the time, you would get outbid, but if you were lucky, you could get aspect of the dragons for cheaper than usual prices, much to the dismay of the seller. The normal thing to do next was to resell them during peak hours, but I had a trick up my Minecraft sleeve. I was going to spend a few coins to fully enchant and reforge these swords, and resell them for even higher prices. For each sword I flipped, I made about 1 to 2 million coins. Speaking of indirectly gaining money from people who quit, it was around this time that the co-op social structure changed drastically. After winter break was over. Murdy Blurp got back into playing the game. And he hatched a plan. He noticed that Murdy Reth and LV60 didn't play the game anymore, but LV60 had lots of valuable items on him. Murdy Blurp would get his friend online to perform a co-op kick, which requires all co-op members to vote on kicking someone out of the profile, so they could salvage the stuff. This was done on LV60, and Murdy Reth left the profile on his own shortly after. A few days after that, Murdy Blurp accidentally put 31 hamster wheels in a minion, so I told him to leave the co-op. And Murdy Blurp actually left the profile as well. Looking back, I kind of miss him. But the story must go on. So I just took all of their stuff and sold some of it. Although I kept LV60's Rod of Legends for myself for later activities. I would continue to milk the auction flipping strategy daily. Except I started to flip superior dragon pieces as well. And I continued to grind alchemy levels on the side. But it didn't really matter because not not melon beat me in the race to 30 skill average, by buying a bunch of enchanted fermented spider eyes and brewing them into potions, much to the dismay of one person. But it did not matter that it did not matter because by that point, the race led me to having higher stats. With these aforementioned stats, I could begin joining better Skyblock guilds. The guild in question was something called Trouble Brewing, in which I met quite a lot of people I still talk to today. One of them was a guy called Pablo. But not only that. There was another person in aforementioned Trouble Brewing, called Fitter One, and similar people such as The Mist, Waddles, and more, who were funding these things called Splashes. Which is where every hour, a splasher invites the entire guild, warps them to their lobby, and splashes every helpful potion effect on you. Which included skill XP boosts. Luckily, due to lots of donations, these splashers could afford doing these for every hour of the day, which was quite convenient for everyone else. For me, grinding skills became one of the most satisfying parts of the game, as the sound effect that plays as you gain experience combined with watching worthless numbers rise, can pretty much hypnotize you. So I began to look in two ways to try hard other skills. One of which was fishing, where LV60's fishing rod was quite helpful. I decided to level fishing at the park, where the chances of catching squid are the highest. But why catch squid? Because after killing a massive amount of squid, you could combine all the ink into the bait ring, which was the second rarest talisman which you could reforge for extra stats. You may be asking what the rarest talisman was, and the answer was the Hunter Ring, which I also obtained after doing an unhealthy amount of Svenslayer, which provided the drops required for the Hunter Ring. Svenslayer was much more convenient than before due to guild splashes, and I no longer needed the pond strategy to beat the boss. I could just vaporize the boss right on the spot. 
Speaking of Slayer, I also spent some time leveling each Slayer level to level 7, which cost about 30 million coins worth of quests. Along the way, I got some pretty juicy items. Keyword, some. After finally getting Alchemy 50 on March, after 100 hours, which was extraordinarily useless, I was about to quit the game. I had done everything I wanted to do. But nature had other plans. Due to nature having other plans, I changed my plan. I was going to play Skyblock to pass the time during quarantine. But now that you've seen the bad news, it's time to see the bad news. My auction flipping strategy died. This was due to the release of the pets update, which added the Ender Dragon pet. Which sounds like it could be the most expensive pet in the game, which it was, and for good reason. It was extremely rare and was one of the best pets, and it was obtained through dragon fights. As expected, every tryhard and their parents began slaying dragons, causing a huge overflow of dragon loot, including the aspect of the dragons, into the economy, making the price drop, tumble, crash, and die. I had about 20 aspect of the dragon saved up while it happened, so it was a big rest in peace. But it did not matter since I already made a few hundred million coins from all the auction flipping I did. While thinking of a new way to make money, I decided to go for maxing another skill, and this time, it was foraging 50. But why foraging? Because there were rumors of a new update coming soon, known as Dungeons. Which was going to have some of the most challenging gameplay. Requiring an insane amount of damage per hit. And you would need every stat you could get your hands on. And foraging just so happened to reward strength. Strength means damage. But you know what else means damage? The combat skill. I decided to grind a bit of combat by farming ghasts at my island, which used to be the most efficient way to grind combat, but this would be cut short by the private island combat experience patch. So foraging it was. Luckily, foraging was made much faster by the newly added tree capitator an axe made from a few hundred jungle logs compressed into an axe, with a few hundred thousand obsidian compressed on top of it, creating a single golden axe even though there is absolutely no gold in the axe, which did not matter because it could vaporize an entire tree in 3 seconds. With such speeds like this, it would take only 100 hours for foraging 50, which was not too terrible. The young armor I bought for farming sugar cane for alchemy 50 also came into handy which allowed me to get many trees in not many time. As well as the new pets introduced in the update, which included a certain ocelot pet that boosts foraging experience. So I got the aforementioned ocelot pet. Also, these pets all start off at level 1, when they don't give any useful stats. They also have different skill types, so you would have to level them with skill experience that matches their type, or else they will stay at low levels and suck a lot. So it took a while to grind the millions of skill experience required to max out a few pets. With all of the aforementioned equipment and stuff, I was now ready to go for foraging 50. It was also around this time that I spent half of my bank account to get my very own ender dragon pet, which I didn't really use that much to be honest, so I just kept it for no reason. But anyways back to what we were talking about which was foraging. While I was grinding foraging. I decided to revisit Slayer with my newfound strength, and sweat on the bosses. After crafting a Reaper Falchion, a Pooch Sword, and a Scorpion Foil, to deal more damage to the Revenant Horror, Sven Master, and Tarantula Mom respectively, I began to dump a lot of money into Slayer quests. More specifically, 100 million coins to reach Revenant level 9, which did not go into waste as it gave decent combat experience which helped to level my ender dragon pet decently. But then it got boring so I dropped 40 million coins on Sven Slayer. Which I got to level 8 at the cost of a few more hours. Which also got pretty boring. On the other hand, there was no way in hell I was revisiting Tarantula Slayer. As the only area where spiders spawn, which is the spider's den, was way too annoying to deal with. However, these 140 million coins did not simply come out of nowhere, for I had discovered a new auction flipping method. I'm not going to expose the details in case anyone even uses it today, but let's just say it involved buying and reselling enchanted books. 
But anyways, back to what we were talking about, which was foraging. Foraging 50 was finally accomplished on May 22nd. All of the wood obtained from foraging, of which there were nearly 10 million, was worth a few 10 million coins, which would come in handy later. I decided to go for enchanting 50 as the next maxed skill, because it was the second fastest skill to max. But it was also quite expensive. So I sold all the wood to buy massive amounts of enchanted lapis lazuli, which I then turned into grand experience bottles. The most efficient way to max enchanting was to equip a guardian pet for the enchanting experience boost, splash a grand experience bottle for about 40 to 52 levels depending on your enchanting level, and then enchant a normal book in the enchanting table, with a few bookshelves depending on your enchanting level. Then you rinse and repeat. With this strategy, you could get enchanting 50 in about 20 hours. So after 20 hours and lots of money down the drain, enchanting 50 was obtained. Another skill that will probably never be applied to anything ever again. After selling my maxed out guardian pet to make up for the loss, I decided to finally go for combat 50, which was long overdue. The best method to get combat 50 was now repeatedly doing Revenant Slayer tier 4, which gives about 5,500 combat experience per quest. With good gear, you could do 1 tier 4 in 30 seconds, or about 100 tier 4s per hour, which meant combat 50 in about 100 hours. After doing some calculations, I determined it would take a few hundred million coins worth of Slayer quests to hit Combat 50. I was already Combat 40 from other stuff, which was half the XP needed for level 50, but I still found the loss to be way too much. So I had a plan to minimize the loss. I would buy cheap level 1 pets for cheap, level them up with Combat experience, and resell them for expensive. Going from level 40 to level 50 is enough experience to max about 2 legendary pets, or 3 epic pets. And the most valuable pets at the time were the Ender Dragon or Phoenix. So I leveled a few epic Ender Dragons and one legendary Phoenix, which resold for a decent amount. The other drops that were dropped by the boss, mainly the Scythe Blades, also kind of minimized the financial loss caused by Combat 50. However, I couldn't bear killing zombies all day long, so I decided to mix this up with a bit of farming. Do you remember the two layers of pumpkin farms I mentioned earlier? It looked like this. It was not up to my standards, and I didn't even have any standards, so to fix things, I hoed and replanted all of the seeds that had been stomped on. But I wasn't stopping there. Instead of farming one row of pumpkins at a time, I decided to farm two rows at a time by using wall running, which is where you press A or D onto a wall while facing towards the pumpkins. The aforementioned wall would be cobblestone slabs as I didn't really think whole blocks looked nice. I also created two new layers of pumpkin farms, so that by the time I finished farming all four layers, the first layer would finish growing back. So basically, I would spend the next few days balancing combat and farming. At this point, I had a skill average of around 40, most of it being useless skills with little application. The dungeons update was still not released, so to be honest I was just grinding random skills until the update dropped. And to pass the time during quarantine. At the same time, I decided to also go for mining 50, which at the time required over 500 hours of manual mining. Which I simply did not feel like doing. So to get mining 50 without mining, I placed down 24 tier 11 snow minions, and put catalyst fuel in them to make them produce more products, which was the most expensive part. You needed 3 stacks of catalysts every day to keep the minions productive 24-7. The minions had a base cost of about 40 million coins, and the fuel cost 2 million coins every day, after you factor in the profit made by selling the snow minion loot. The most important part of the setup was the diamond spreading, where about 10% of all items produced by the minions will turn into diamonds, which increases profit and mining XP. With this setup, a maxed silverfish pet for mining XP boost, and the mining XP boost potion itself, I could get 500,000 mining experience every day, which is equivalent to 5 hours of manually mining in a cobblestone generator which was the most efficient way to level mining manually. 
In the time saved by snow minions, I got combat 50 on June 29th, and farming 50 on July 9th, by collecting weed from a weed minion, which was a trick I copied from fellow guild member Parsha. But finally, after that, dungeons was dropped by the admins, which came in 4 floors back then. With foraging and combat 50, the dungeon was pretty easy to get through. By then, I was still using superior dragon armor and aspect of the dragons, but items from dungeons were much more powerful than my current gear. More specifically, the zombie knight armor and zombie knight sword. The full set gives you quite a bit of strength and defense, while the sword gives an extra 30 strength if used with the zombie knight armor. Regardless to say, this was quite overpowered in dungeons, and I spent quite a lot of time with it beating Flora 3. Which, unlike skill grinding, paid off with a lot of payment. I obtained a few recombobulators and pieces of adaptive armor, which I promptly sold on the auction house for tens of millions of profit. But it did not last for long as everyone was doing dungeons and getting rewards, and all the supply led to prices crashing, dying, and getting destroyed. So I went back to skill grinding. I still could not bring myself to mine cobblestone for hours on end, so I decided to go fishing. You could not exactly afk your way to fishing 50, like mining 50, and you had to manually fish for about 500 hours for fishing 50. It was now summer break again, so I had some spare time to spare. I was still using the Rod of Legends I inherited from LV60, but I was moving on from the hub pond or park strategy. There was a new strategy called barn fishing, where you go to the hub island, but instead of traveling to the barn, you use an aspect of the end to teleport to the barn while staying in the same lobby. This way, you can be at the barn island without all the people that are usually in a barn island. This feature has been known for a while, but it became more popular after the pets update I mentioned earlier added pets for fishing as well. The two pets in question are the Dolphin Pet and Squid Pet. At max levels, the Dolphin Pet increases sea creature chance by 20% and stuns all sea creatures, while the maxed Squid Pet increases fishing experience by 30%. Killing sea creatures give a huge amount of fishing experience compared to normal catches, so by increasing sea creature chance, you are increasing fishing experience. Except you don't kill the sea creatures immediately. By fishing at this location on the barn, all sea creatures you catch will fly backwards and land on the ground below you, where they can't attack you. We will save them for later. They despawn in 6 minutes, so after 5 minutes of catching sea creatures with the dolphin pet for extra creatures, you switch to the squid pet, jump down, and kill everything you've spawned with the 30% fishing XP boost. Giving you a lot of fishing experience. Then you rinse and repeat. After some mining and fishing, the admins dropped another update, related to dungeons again. They added a single floor to the catacombs. But one can change everything. Because in this floor, an item called the Spirit Scepter was added. Putting my zombie knight sword to shame. Obtained by several blocks of enchanted lapis lazuli, and three wings of a spirit, aka 10 million coins, which I happily spent which makes clearing the dungeon much more convenient. After doing a few floor 4 runs, getting some good loot and money, which became bad because everyone was getting loot, I got bored of floor 4 and decided to go back to skill grinding. I was around mining level 45, so I decided to stop fishing and focus all my time to hit mining 50, to end it once and for all. And end it once and for all, I did. On September the 1st, Mining 50 was finally achieved after 200 million coins of catalysts and 50 hours of manual mining. Which was a week before a new update came and caused mining to be about 5 times easier, but I want to put that out of my head. After selling my snow minions, it was time to get back to fishing, which I was about level 36 on. It was at this time that I decided that I would go for a skill average of 50, which was the highest you could go and therefore it was a massive flex back then. And the only skill left for me to do, was fishing. Speaking of the update that made mining 5 times easier, it also made fishing about 2 times easier. Sea creatures were buffed to give more experience, you could upgrade the rod of legends to the rod of the sea, and the shark armor was now the best set in the game for fishing. 
So I got all of the aforementioned thingies. With this, Fishing 50 was only about 200 to 300 hours away. But all good news must come with bad news, and the bad news was that online school began. And I didn't exactly feel like playing video games during class. It was also around this time that I started putting more time into a YouTube channel. So I spent less time in the actual game, but the grind continued. For about a week. Because fishing was unbearable. So I spent about 200 million coins on 24 tier 11 fishing minions, but no catalysts because I was running low on money. So I used hamster wheels instead. Which made about 200,000 fishing XP every day. Speaking of coins, after milking enchantment book flipping for months, it was starting to die out because everyone was milking it now. Resulting in the allegorical cow drying up. But it didn't matter as I had milked nearly 1 billion coins. It also didn't matter because the update that made mining 5 times easier and fishing 2 times easier, also made money making much easier. Most of the new money making methods came from the new mares added into the game. 5 random candidates, out of 11, are chosen every 5 real life days, and whoever gets the most votes will become mayor, making their perks active. One such perk is the mythological event provided by Mayor Diana, in which you may get a special wood shovel and a griffin pet. With both of these items, you may find griffin burrows around the hub, which you may dig up to find various weird entities, some of which drop items worth millions of coins. Another such event, hosted by Marina, allows you to fish up sharks and sell their teeth for more coins. And there was yet another opportunity to make more coins. The admins dropped yet another banger dungeon update, and this time it was Floor 5. One of the rewards from this aforementioned floor was the Shadow Fury, which sold for around 80 million coins when it first came out. Unfortunately, my dungeon luck ran out, and I did not get any profitable loot after several hours of grinding. But anyways. Dungeons lets you play as one of 5 classes, and I was Berserker. And even though everyone realized that mage was the best class, I was completely oblivious to this. So I bought the brand new Shadow Fury, for 40 million coins. It was good inside and outside of dungeons, which put my aspect of the dragons out of business. I then sold my superior dragon armor and replaced it with a brand new Shadow Assassin armor instead, at the cost of about 50 million coins. And this paid off quite well. For about a few hours because I got bored of floor 5. So shortly after, I returned to fishing. I would just collect my fishing minions, and spend a few hours fishing manually along that every day. But the update that made mining 5 times easier, made fishing 2 times easier, and made money easier, also made Slayer easier. Because a mare who calls himself Phaetrox arrived. He decreased Slayer quest prices by 50%. And each completed Slayer quest gives 25% more Slayer XP. Making Slayer 2 and a half times more cost effective. I could not turn this down, so for the 5 days he was elected, I obtained Sven Slayer 9 for a discount, and finally returned to Tarantula Slayer. Which I only got to level 8, before Aatrox was kicked out of office. So you know the drill. Except I didn't do fishing because the admins dropped yet another banger dungeons update. Floor 6. In which I realized how garbage the Berserker class truly was, so I switched to the Mage class. So I consulted a few friends who told me to buy tier 9 perfect armor boots, necromancer pants and shirt, and wither goggles. I kept the Shadow Assassin set as it was useful out of dungeons. This new armor, when reforged to necrotic, gave a crap ton of intelligence. Speaking of intelligence, I no longer used the Ender Dragon pet in dungeons. I now used a sheep pet for even more intel. But why intelligence? Because of a feature called ability scaling, where more intelligence leads to more ability damage. And all mage items, which included my spirit scepter, did ability damage. This was very convenient for mages. Finally, my alchemy and enchanting 50, which rewarded intelligence, was useful. But the spirit scepter would be outclassed by the 100 million coin minus staff, introduced on October 16th, which has an ability that does this. I could not turn this down. So I promptly obtained a minus staff of my own for 150 million coins. 
but none of that money would be made back, because I did not get any good loot from Floor 6 after several hours of grinding. Except for Infinite Quiver 6. And I was quite impatient, so I left to do some more fishing. There wasn't much fishing left to do, as I was coming up on fishing level 48. Fishing level 49 was obtained about 4 days later, and 6 days later, on October 24, I finally did it. I became the 17th person to hit 50 skill average, which I did on stream. I sold all of my fishing minions for 5 million per piece to 2 NFG, and my fishing pets were sold to a guy I forgot. I still keep my rod of the sea by the way. Now, there was only one thing left to do. And it was getting all Slayer levels to 9. I was already Sven and Revenant level 9, so I just took a break until Aatrox returned to office, in which I happily got Tarantula level 9 by doing a scuffed trick shot. And overshooting exactly 1 million Slayer XP by 5. I wasn't going to do dungeons as I got rejected by pretty much every dungeon party, so I spent a few minutes to find one last fairy souls to get some final stat boosts from Tio the fairy. Then I took a break from Skyblock to play some vanilla Minecraft. I also did some other projects, including Cake Hub, which was built the day after stat boost cakes were released on November 4th. And it still exists to this day. Another thing that still exists to this day are the builds on my island. Which include, a meeting place for the co-op. Trees that have no tops because I ran out of leaves and I don't want to grind leaves. And a house that looks like a tornado hit it. I had now truly done everything in the game. But escaping the game would not come as easily as I thought, because on November 6th, the admins released Farming 60. And you know what was going to happen next. To unlock Farming 60, you must get a gold medal in each of the 10 different farming competitions, one for each crop in the game. You must compete with thousands of other players, and only the top 5% will get a gold medal. Luckily, they were only 20 minutes long, so it wasn't too terrible. So after building a farm for all of the crops, which was made convenient by the builder's wand, but was still very boring because I had to build a layer for each crop, then buying the new hose released in the update for more crops, and buying an elephant pet to harvest even more crops, I got a gold medal in each competition. The easiest ones were cactus and mushroom. For cactus all you needed was to place down cactus minions, and you just harvest the cactus they place. And for mushroom, you just built a giant mycelium layer, then have mushroom minions place mushrooms for you, then farm all the mushrooms they place. Now that I raised the farming cap from 50 to 60, it was time to actually get the experience required for level 60, which was twice the XP needed for 50. The pumpkin farm was no longer the meta, it was now sugar cane, which could make millions of coins per hour and give the same amount of XP as pumpkins, if you used the brand new mythic recombobulated turbo sugar cane 5 Turing tier 3 sugar cane hoe. Which sounds like it could be the most expensive hoe in the game. Which was false. But anyways, the next few days were very uneventful as I was just farming cane all day. I was in the middle of farming sugar cane when the final dungeon floor came out mid-November. AKA Floor 7. Me and a few other clueless friends spent quite a while trying to figure out how to beat it, and even though after some time, we managed to consistently beat the boss, it did not matter because I continued to get bad loot continuously. So I raged quit and went back to farming. Or did I? because the admins decided that having just 1 out of 8 skills be level 60 was awkward, so they added enchanting 60. The enchanting book strategy was now dead, as the experimentation table allowed you to get XP much faster. The way it works is this. There are too many games you can play, one of them being like OSU but combined with memory, and the other one being like piano tiles but combined with memory as well. Once you complete both mini-games, you unlock a third mini-game, which is a memory card game. You have a limited amount of moves, and you can get anything from enchantment books to bottles to enchanting experience from these cards. On average, you can get up to a few million enchanting XP per memory card game, but you can only do it three times every day. By the way, the memory OSU game is easily cheesable as you can take a screenshot of the pattern, 
Put your screenshot folder side by side with the game, and just copy the screenshot. And to be honest, farming all day was getting boring. The game in general was also getting boring. So I left trouble brewing for a guild called Lost in Space, where I talked with a lot of chill people to pass the time. But there was a better way to pass the time, which was to take a break from the game. Which I did. After coming back, I noticed that Mining 60 was out. I didn't really care because I hate mining. I did a few Floor 7 dungeon runs, and realized that my current dungeon equipment was bad. The medal for mage was now the storm armor combined with wither goggles, and a sword called the Hyperion, both of which costed a few hundred million coins. Which I had. So I sold my Shadow Fury, my Minus Staff, and the old dungeon stuff, to get the new dungeon stuff. The clean Hyperion by itself is kind of useless. So you need to put all these three wither ability scrolls on it to make it useful. Teaching all three tricks to your Hyperion causes it to get one giant trick up its sleeve. The Wither Impact. One of the most overpowered item abilities in the entire game. All the mana from the storm set made the Hyperion deal insane area damage due to ability scaling, so you could basically steamroll dungeons with this. But it did not matter because I still got trash loot all day, every day. So to switch things up, instead of actually completing the dungeon, I would just make it to the room before the boss room, aka the blood room, kill all the mobs there for loot, and leave. Also known as a frag run. The blood rooms in floor 7 spawn one giant per run, which may drop one of these four items. Only two of them were valuable, although the most valuable is the diamante handle, selling at one and a half million coins per handle. The average blood room can make around 500,000 coins, and you could do about 40 frag runs in an hour. So if you were really lucky, you could make 20 million coins per hour. But I didn't just want to go for money. Combat 60 was released just a few days ago, so I bought another minus staff. But what do these two things have to do with each other? Because due to an oversight, that still hasn't been fixed in 4 months, the Hyperion does not give any combat experience. The Minus Staff does similar area damage to the Hyperion, but it gives combat experience. So I just did frag runs with the Midas Staff to get money and combat XP. And that's basically where we are now. After 10,000 days of Hypixel Skyblock, or about 3,000 hours of play time. But what will happen next? That's a good question. And instead of showing off my current stats and stuff, I'm going to show you some of the best, and sometimes funniest, moments I've had so far. And by the way, I make all of these videos by myself. So if you want to support the I Go By Lots of Names channel, consider becoming a member, or subscribe if you don't have money.